Volkswagen Italy, I think I love you. You've given a whole new meaning to the term junk in the trunk by cocking up your Instagram handle, literally. This and other epic branding failures, next. I'm Tony Logan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars <laughs> Australia only website card. Now, in this report, we're going to deal with Volkswagen first because that company, Fair Dinkum, they are the gift that just keeps on giving, are they not? Then we might whip out about five epic branding failures from around the world which just nobody saw, and they should have. I'm pretty sure someone should have seen what was going on there, but apparently not at all, went straight through to the keeper and got disseminated into the public, and here we all are, full of self-amuse over it. And then we might, I don't know, polish things off, so to speak, with the absolute epic automotive branding failure of all time, or at least if all time was since COVID. I got that for you too. So I want you to get those mental gears a churning and see if you can figure out what the biggest objective branding failure in the automotive domain is since COVID because I've got the data. It's incontrovertible and I'll whip it out and jam it in your face right at the end. I've always wanted to do that. YouTube does have community guidelines though and I'm gonna try and stay in the box, so to speak. So, this, what you're looking at on the screen right now, is the official Instagram handle of Volkswagen Italy. Now, when some people see this, they see Volkswagen Italia. And when others see this, they see Volkswagen Genitalia. I think you can tell which camp I'm in. It just jumped off the page at me. Those cocks in marketing are behind this, I'm almost certain. I stake my reputation on it. Not that there's all that much on the line, frankly, not anymore. But this is emblematic of what I would call the satire threshold of reality. It used to be like when I was a kid, you'd watch TV and satire would be divorced from reality. Everything would be more exaggerated than reality. And that's what made it funny. But now... Reality has become more satirical inherently than comedy. And that's a real hump to get over, so to speak, is it not? Who should we interview about this? Fritz Nuttendragon from Head Office. He did not immediately respond to requests for comment, but his mascot, Anzi Bumpstops, Read from a prepared statement briefly to reporters outside head office. <sighs> On this Instagram business, he said, You humans are frankly obsessed with innuendo relating to your reproductive organs. I can't dispute that like we are. Has there been five minutes in my life when I haven't thought about reproductive organs, just however briefly? I... Not since I was 12 or 15, I'm pretty sure. Anyway. He went on and said, this certainly has not been easy for me. I've heard every conceivable joke about sacks being bigger than peckers, as you might imagine. But in fact, as official mascot to the marketing department and king of the Volkswagen genitalia henhouse, hung as I am, I have absolutely no problem keeping as many as 30 chicks in line at any given time. I'm not seeing it. I therefore fully support her Knut and Dragon's choice of Instagram handle. It is a true reflection of the proud Volkswagen genitalia brand and everything this great company stands for. I think that sums it up pretty much. There has been a viral component to this, so you couldn't just call it a failure. In a sense, it's a real success. And they are cocks, so. This is not the worst branding decision that's ever been made, however. I've got five epic F-ups for you right now that are even worse than this. 
And then we'll get to the worst automotive branding decision post COVID, shall we? Now, this one that we're looking at now is a recent official Malaysia Day marketing poster. Anak Malaysia, it is meant to scream. <sighs> From the ridge capping of the roof, right? Which literally means child of Malaysia. Clearly a bit of a bum deal that year, don't you think? Guaranteed to attract the worst, or at least wrong, class of tourist. Now, who should we do next? Tesco. Tesco is, of course, a sort of listed multinational British grocery giant. They should know better, don't you think? This is an actual shot of their on sale one litre buttermilk carton. Yes. Is that not just a thing of beauty and a joy to behold? How unfortunate! Especially when creased in just the right or is that wrong way. Like that one on the right there. How unfortunate. Admit it though, dude. This is the buttermilk that you would choose to serve to her parents for dessert during Christmas lunch. I know I would. I've had lots of in-laws too. Mama's baking now. This one's from Greece. And apparently she is baking, literally. Well done there. Who doesn't like a bit of a hot mama? Magazine design next. Magazines are complex. I used to work in magazines. But uh, they can also be unfortunate when you get the overlay thing wrong. You know? Imagine being the cover girl for this promotional magazine. Also in Italy. Still, dude... It is oddly effective, is it not? Like, suddenly, I want to visit Milan. I think I speak for many viewers when I say we all do. And now health, which of course is vitally important, body being a temple and all of that hoopla, right? Chewable hair, skin and nails. Like, if you're new to intermittent fasting and you're having difficulty hanging in there, you're looking at it 16 hours and your insides are churning and you just want to eat something, just stock the pantry with chewable hair, skin and nails. Watch those kilos just evaporate. <laughs> now, the ultimate automotive branding failure. It's not Volkswagen. Genitalia, although that is a pretty strong effort. Can you guess what it is? I have to tell you that graphic design, you know, it's a black art. And these graphic logos, there's two kinds of logos. There's graphic logos and then there's typographic logos. And graphic logos can be, they can be anything. And there's a hell of a lot of wank about that, incidentally. Like... Mazdas, for example, which is, to me, it's always just looked like a seagull about to be sucked up the arse of a 747's jet engine. It's actually, I did research, I know, dangerous precedent, it's actually a pair of M-shaped wings in an oval. That's what it's meant to be. The wankery around all of this suggests, the official wankery, not just my made-up wankery, the official wankery suggests uh, it's inspirational of thoughts of... Mazda's flexible thinking, creativity, kindness, resilience and creativity and vitality. I look at it and all I see is seagull up the arse of a jet engine, but there you go. Now, typographic logo design, that's a different thing. It's all about simplification and distillation and clarity, right? Typographic design. For example, I think we all know by now that anything in an oval that is a primary or secondary colour, best steered away from. This is the power of the simple distillation of these concepts, right? Ford and Land Rover, looking at you. If you buy into that stuff, you know, you want to make yourself a customer there, it's all a little bit Anak Malaysia, is it not? It's served in a Tesco buttermilk. Less likely to be, I don't know, mama's baking or, you know, high-class personal assistant in Milan helping you with, you know, the shopping and the dining. Which brings us to the winner here. 
And incidentally, the winner here is currently the number three car maker in Australia. They just climbed on top of Mitsubishi. They're still sort of underneath um, Toyota and Mazda. It's a bit of a four-way up there, but when you know some of the people, that's a, a monument to human ugliness. But anyway, I'm only talking metaphorically. So it's the number three car maker in this country. That is the failure. Right? It just is. And I'm not, this is just my opinion. Dude, I wouldn't do this subjectively to you. I've got objective data that suggests that the new Kia logo and oh, symbology is just everything with them. They got a, a, a zillion drones up in the sky and in the middle of the night and they had you know computer control and they all had lights on them and they painted the sky with the new epic fail Kia logo. And Hyundai is as guilty as sin on this as well, you know, the symbology thing they... Um, for Ionic. They got Ionic. Okay. And everyone thinks I'm in the pocket of Kia and Hyundai. This should dispel a couple of those myths. Hyundai goes, we need an electric car brand. We could call it Hyundai E or Hyundai Electric. But no, we'll call it Ionic. And we've got to misspell Ionic with a Q at the end. And that will allow us to turn the fucking London eye into a queue and I don't know how much that cost but you know we can't sell any of these cars because we can't make them but you know we got the messaging just right and Kia did exactly the same thing with this logo right and the reason it's a mistake I've got here's a graph on the screen okay from Google Trends which shows five years of global internet searching by ambient fucking humanity for the term KN car, okay? That's when you see a car in traffic and you go, hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? What is that, that KN car? And then you remember it and you're sitting in front of Google, you've downloaded sufficient pornography for the day or something, and you think, that KN car, I'll look that up. That's those search volumes for five years, okay? And the big spike, there's another one there actually for KN cars, right? And the same coincidental surge when Logo was launched, okay? That's your objective data. Now, I just had a look at WordStream, which is a free keyword research tool. In America alone, there are 33,000 100 searches for KN car every month, okay? Another 18,100 searches for KN car brand and 8,100 more Americans search for KN cars. So, and there's all these other sort of incidental search terms without that much volume relating to KN cars, okay? It's over 60,000 in total people per month just in America. And I'd suggest that's a real, let's call it Anak Malaysia sandwich right there. When your logo is so incomprehensible that so many people in ambient humanity just don't get it. It looks like K backwards N to a sufficient number of people. And that's not an example in my book of distillation and simplification and clarity. It's the exact opposite. It's confusing the shit out of people in a market where there's already enough confusion simply by virtue of all of the brands you can buy. There's like 60 different brands of car available in Australia today. And there are plenty of people in Australia looking at a car and going, looking at that new Sportage and that sexy army green colour. And incidentally, I rate their cars. Their cars are shit hot. If they could build them and deliver them, that'd be awesome too. Maybe sometime in the future, that'd be ace, okay? But when somebody sees that shit hot Kia Sportage GT line in that military green colour that looks so cool, and they look at it and they go, mm, yeah, I could upgrade this shitty Yaris I've had with 190,000 Ks on the clock. I want that. What is that KN brand? Because it's K 
marked backwards N. That's what people see. K backwards N. And Kia knows this is a problem too, I'd suggest, because do a little experiment, dude. Just get an incognito window up and running in Google Chrome. Okay, so what that does is, the, the command for that on a Mac is command shift N. So you go to Chrome, you invoke the Google homepage window, right? And you just go command shift N and that'll log you out just in that tab, right? So Google will be staring back at the screen, not at you logged into Google, which is how it stalks you normally. It'll be staring back at you as if you're a virgin who's never logged into Google. And this means that your search... Uh, terms will not reflect, the results of your searches will not reflect the previous searches that you've done on Google because Google is stalking you. If you log in in an incognito way, you'll be a clean skin as far as Google's concerned. So just type in KN car and then hit search. See what happens. The number one hit on the page there, for me at least, is Kia Australia. And that tells me that a bunch of IT brainiacs working for the agency that manages Kia's website knows that this is a problem. And they've done mad IT voodoo to keyword optimize at least some of those pages to be the number one hit on Google for the term KN car because the logo is such a friggin' failure. So what I propose, perhaps... How does this work for you? We might do a global recall on the logo. And just, if you've got the logo on your car, you can take it to the nearest dealer and get it fixed for free. I'll fix one for you right now and solve this problem, shall I? And it's actually not that hard. You just need the special silver uh, Sharpie, you know, if you're going to fix it on an actual car. But here's how you fix it, okay? And how long does this take? It's not like going to be a week and a half. It's not going to cost very much. There's how you eliminate the 60,000 people just in America. So it's got to be what? 120,000 people a month around the world who don't get the fucking logo? Here's how you fix it, dude. Tell me if that is not instantly clear in the way that this is not. Logo design. Anyway, I'm off to interact with my buddies at Volkswagen <laughs> Genitalia, who catalyzed this uh, whole interest in branding failures for today's report. Anyway, life is pretty serious from time to time, and I just think it's nice to be able to kick back and think about Volkswagen Genitalia, Mama's Baking, and... <sighs> Spending a couple of weeks recreationally in Milan from time to time with just the Goldilocks person. Wouldn't that be nice?